Hello, world, and welcome back to Kerbal Rocket School. In this episode, I'm going to teach you some techniques to help you stage your rocket more efficiently. These techniques all revolve around the use of a special part, the fuel line. You can use the fuel line to connect fuel tanks that aren't stacked together, together. As an added bonus, you can use them to determine the order in which the fuel tanks are drained. The most obvious use of this ability is drop tanks. The idea here is to have extra fuel tanks attached to the side of the main craft that will be dropped from the rest of the ship. You can use radial decouplers to attach the extra tanks and then connect them using fuel lines. When you attach the fuel lines, you'll see they have directional arrows. The arrows will point from the first tank you connect them to the, to the second. These arrows denote the direction in which the fuel will flow. The tank you're taking fuel from will be emptied first, so keep that in mind when designing your craft. The next technique we'll use here is called onion staging. Onion staging involves using liquid fuel boosters on the side of a liquid fuel rocket. The catch is that the main engine will use the fuel from the boosters until they're dry. You can think of it as having engines on your drop tanks. To do this, you can take any rocket with normal liquid boosters and add fuel lines, or just take any rocket with drop tanks and add engines onto them. Remember to make sure the engines are staged correctly, as well as the decouplers. To help visualize the staging here, let's look at a cross-section of the craft. Let's number the tanks so we know the order in which they'll be drained, and let's put some arrows to show fuel flow direction. We call this onion staging because all the boosters shed off the main crafts like the outer layers of an onion. I don't know why onion though. I would have named it like layer cake staging or parfait staging. Yeah. We can take this idea of onion staging even further. We can add more layers out on the side, or we can add layers inside the layers. Yo, dog. The second method is called asparagus staging. Instead of having all the outer stagers feed into the center, we can have them feed into each other in a series. They'd also drop off from each other in the same sequence. So instead of looking like this, it'll look like this. Asparagus staging maximizes the fuel efficiency and thrust. And it's called asparagus staging because, I mean, it looks kind of... Like an, I, I don't get it either. But, as always, make sure all your decouplers and engines are staged properly. So, we have drop tanks, onion staging, and asparagus staging. What's the most effective? Do they even have an advantage over normal boosters? Let's test this ourselves. All of our test craft will have the same fuel tank and engine configuration. The only thing I'll be changing is the staging of the decouplers and engines, as well as the fuel lines. All of the crafts have a very small payload, and a central stage with a large fuel tank, and four boosters with a small fuel tank. The changes in design for each test will only affect the total thrust and weight. These factors will affect how effectively the ship uses its fuel, and how the ship interacts with the atmosphere. For a control test, all engines are fired on launch, there are no fuel ducts whatsoever. This is a basic booster configuration. Because of this, the craft has a pretty high thrust to weight ratio. In fact, it's too high. A good portion of the speed the craft gains is bled off due to drag. You'd want to control your thrust so that the craft doesn't gain too much speed in the lower parts of the atmosphere. Another problem here is that the central tank is being emptied the whole time, even in the lower atmosphere, where it's not really needed. All of these poor design choices result in a maximum altitude of only 308 kilometers. For the next test, the ship will still not use any fuel lines, however this time, the central will only be fired when the outer engines are spent. This means the outer engines are less like boosters and more like serial stages. Since at launch it's only using 4 engines, the thrust to weight ratio at this point isn't as high as it was earlier. That's good! This means that not as much speed is being wasted in the lower atmosphere. However, this would pose a problem, especially with bigger rockets. When the outer engines are de depleted, that's when the central rocket ignites. Until this point, the fuel in the central tank has not been used at all. This way, the main fuel tank can be used for its full potential. This time, we got our Kerbonaut up to 919 kilometers. Awesome. The next test, we'll set up our boosters in an onion configuration. All engines will be ignited on launch, but the central engine will be using the fuel from the boosters until they dry. Then we'll drop the boosters and use the central tank. This time, we're using more fuel in the lower atmosphere, and it's not really needed that much. Onion staging kind of finds a balance between classic boosters and the radial staging that was used in the previous test. All in all, this craft gets us as high as 774 kilometers. 
For the last test, we'll use asparagus staging. All engines will ignite on launch, but the other engines will be divided in groups of two. One group will use the fuel from the second until that second group is dry. The central tank will also use fuel from the second group of boosters and then use the first group of boosters. This means that there's an intermediate stage where instead of five, only three engines are on the craft. This configuration combines the best of both worlds. You get the super high thrust to weight ratio on launch, and you get the efficiency of stages within stages. And after all that, when the booster is finished, you still have that entire central stack to burn through. The asparagus staging setup gets our craft up to 1,319 kilometers. So, while we review our results, let's talk about what we've learned. Asparagus style boosters obviously hold an advantage over onion style boosters, and I'd be hard pressed to find a situation where that's not true. The advantage that radial staging holds over onion style boosters is only a good thing when the boosters can lift the craft without the help of the central engines. There are situations in which the radial staging holds an advantage over asparagus staging, but that's only when you're conducting tests at 100% thrust all the time. When you're actually playing the game, if you feel like you're losing too much speed to drag, you can simply lower the throttle. You may be wondering why I didn't bother testing drop tanks. The truth is, when you're launching, using drop tanks only hold you back. You have the extra fuel, yes, but with only the central engine, you may not even be able to lift yourself off the ground. That doesn't mean drop tanks don't have their place though. They're especially useful in space, where thrust to weight ratio doesn't really matter. With drop tanks, you're saving weight by not carrying the extra engines, and the only downside, at least in space, is a longer burn. So now we know that asparagus staging is king in this game. But would that be the case in real life? The answer is no. The only reason using boosters like this works out well is because of how Kerbal Space Program calculates drag. Drag in the game doesn't work like it does in real life. You won't ever have to test your craft in a wind tunnel to make sure it's aerodynamic. The game simply assigns a drag value to each part. The more parts, the more drag. This means that it doesn't matter what your craft is shaped like as long as you don't add too many parts. Besides the fact that this makes boosters work much better than they would in real life, it also means that adding aerodynamic parts like nose cones and adapters are only for show. Like every part in the game, they simply add on to your total drag number. So really, that nose cone is only holding you back. That's all for this time, and I will see you out there.